Hi everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Corinne and you have found Corey Creates. I am a maker and a creative and this is where I share my creative life. Um, I am focused primarily on needle arts, gardening, and cooking. And Corey Creates is where I post the majority of my floss tubes. And you have found floss tube number nine. Um, today is December 28th, 2022. It's a Wednesday and I'm super excited to be before you. If this is your first time, welcome. I hope you will subscribe and get those notifications for when I'm popping back up again. And for my Stitch fam, welcome back. Um, ooh, I think this is my second video this month, y'all. I'm proud of myself. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I do have quite a bit to share with you today. Um, just in full disclosure, hopefully you won't hear any noise, but as you can see, I'm in a new location. I always said I was not going to be a person who filmed in their bedroom. And here we are. Okay. Um, it's just better light in here. I'm team. No ring light whenever possible. I have one. I just hate using it. And this room does have a lot better light. Um, I kind of, it was a last minute decision to move in here. So my light is starting to wane a little bit because it is about 2.15 in the afternoon, but we're going to get this in anyway. Um, lots to share. Uh, it has been very cold here. Actually, today is the first day it has not been cold. I think it's about 54 degrees and we were sub-zero last week. Okay, we were below freezing up until yesterday. So we're in a, and just so you know, you may hear some high winds. We've got a lot of high winds here in the Midwest and basically because it's blowing in a warm front. Um, but yeah, we were down to, I believe six below a couple days before Christmas. It was crazy. And now it's warm. Like I literally had to open the door to the deck to let some cooler air in because I didn't know if I was going to make it in this sweatshirt. So, um, and because it's a nice day, People have been walking by, walking their dogs. We have um, a lake right outside this window and the Canadian geese. I swear they're like a gang, you all. They're everywhere. They don't move, they don't care, and they're outside and they're kicking it because it's finally warm um, and they're making their call sound. So hopefully you won't hear that too much. But we're gonna see what we can do in this location just for today. I do prefer to be in the living room because I have more space to sit things and in here I do not. Um, plus I'm perched precariously on this bed. So again, we'll see how it works out, but we'll at least do this for today. So what do I have on tap for you today? First of all, I'm gonna share my whips, what I've been working on. I do have a new start, um, but the main thing I wanna share today is my New Year's Eve 12 by 12 plans. Now, my husband has informed me that we are going to try to go out to dinner, but he hasn't made a reservation, so we will see. But regardless, I'm gonna do 12 by 12 to the extent that I can. So I have 12 whips, I'm sorry, I have six whips and six new starts that I'm going to do for 12 by 12. For those of you that don't know, it's all over Facebook, all over uh, YouTube, but 12 by 12, um, I believe the hashtag is NYE 12 by, the word by, B-Y 12 um, is the hashtag for the event that was started by, oh, I forgot her name. I know uh, Just Keep Stitching, Pam and Steph have been doing it. Um, they came up with it last year and I'll put the name of the other lady down here, Kibby. I got it, Kibby. And um, this is something that they did last year. So they're doing it again this year. And I think a lot more people are gonna participate this year. And you can do either 12 new starts to take you into 2023 
or you can do some people are doing 12 whips and if you're like me I'm gonna split the difference and I'm gonna do six whips and six new starts simply because I don't have 12 whips I don't think and I need more whips so that's why I'm gonna do the six new starts and then the other reason is I just can't imagine doing 12 new things at once um, so I'm excited I have everything I'll just kind of tell you how I've planned it out and we'll see if I can get it all in. But um, I'm gonna start with my two whips that are not a part of my 12 by 12. And those are, I'm gonna show them both of them to you at the same time because they are both smalls. We have Cozy Christmas Wishes by Lizzie Kate and Thankful by the Colorado Cross Stitcher. And I will put on the screen, I'll try to do one on each side, where I was last month or last video, which was just a couple of weeks ago. And then here's where I am now. And hopefully you all can see this. But they are coming along. Now the Cozy Christmas Wishes, you all have frogged it. The cup there, I am a little further along on the cup but I frogged it last Saturday. I was at my son's tennis match and somebody in the comments on my last video, and I totally apologize, I don't remember her name, but she had made a comment about the light part of one of my projects being too light for the fabric that it was on. And at first I was like, well, I like it like that. And then I thought about it, I'm like, Corinne, just be honest, it is a little too light it's going to be hard to see that cup. So as a result, I frogged it. There is a needle workshop near where I work, the high school where I work, and they carry Weeks Dye Works. So what I did was I went in there and apologize for the zipper. Um, this is Oatmeal by Gentle Arts. This is the called for, for that pattern. And I already had it. I wanted to go with it because I already had it. And I feel like that lady that made that comment, she was right. So I went into the needlepoint shop and I found Angel Hair by Weeks Dye Works. So as you can see, this is a little darker. Okay, it's a little darker than the oatmeal. And I like it a lot better. So thank you, whoever was that made that comment. Um, Cause she was right. Okay. And then thankful, not a lot of progress on that. As a matter of fact, I think I told you in my last video, I was finished and I was putting it away. I can't leave it alone, you all. I really like it. I really like how it's turning out. It's such a simple stitch. stitch. It is on 18 count. I believe it's like a cream or ivory Lugana. It was just something I had in my stash and I think it's coming well. So all I have to do on Cozy Christmas Wishes is finish the cup and then uh, put the word cozy and wishes at the top and the bottom. And I also am making a change on that. It was another, it was Pine by Gentle Arts that I was supposed to be using for that. But I'm like, that looks, it almost looks exactly like the other one, which is Blue Spruce by General Arts. So it was barely any difference between the colors on that. So I just found, I did this uh, Merlot. I'm just gonna do this Merlot by Weeks That Works, which I picked up there as well. Okay, so those are my two whips, my two small whips. I think I'm just gonna carry these over for at least another couple of weeks. And because my son has some uh, one more tennis week and then my daughter is starting her volleyball matches. So I think I'm just going to carry these over and have these as my travel pieces, at least for the next couple of weeks. And then I'll reevaluate and decide where I want to go from there. So those are my two lips. Right. Let's jump into my 12 by 12 plan. Um, I was really excited when I heard about this. I vaguely remember hearing about it last year, um, but 
it wasn't on my radar but this year it most definitely is because like I said I need some more whips I will in my next video talk more about my plans for 2023 and stats from 2022 but I had a few whips left over from years and years and years ago that you all saw that I finished this year so I wanted some more whips um, I wanted to revisit some designers from my youth and uh, so those have been incorporated into my new starts and I'm excited about it so for today I've got a basket full of my project bags and all of the things that I plan to work on um, I hope you all had a Merry Christmas um, happy Kwanzaa to those of you that celebrate and I hope those of you that do Hanukkah had a blessed Hanukkah season so um, I'm excited about 2023 um, just in all areas I'm trying to evaluate and do things with intention tied to my purpose in 2023 so I think the projects that I have pulled for this weekend are going to do that as far as my floss tube channel and just my overall stitchy vibe, what I wanna stitch, what I wanna hang in my new house when it comes, cause I'm believing it's coming. Um, so I'm looking forward to this weekend doing 12 by 12. So let's jump in. I will also, as I'm going through 12 by 12, a lot of the whips that I've been working on during the week are incorporated in there. So I will talk about those at the same time. So let's jump right in with my big one, okay? This is Heaven and Earth Designs Vintage Baker. I am doing this on 25 count Lugana. I believe this is an antique white that I got from Fat Quarter Shop. And you all, I'm still not back up to my 5,000 stitches a month. I am going to work on this a couple more days before Saturday, but I have made it through the timer as you all saw in my last video, but now you all, I'm back into some more confetti, okay? This is a recipe card right here, so that has writing on it. Ugh. I have frogged and made so many mistakes right here. And, and don't get me wrong, for those of you that do have an earth designs, you know, most of the time you don't frog, it was just one or two that are off. You just go back over it, <laughs> okay? Because it is just a single strand of thread. I am going one over one, 25 count. So I, do, I don't frog very much, okay? But I just, I just feel like down here, I'm just making all kinds of mistakes. And it's kind of driving me nuts. Um, I think I've missed some stitches. Like there's some stitches that I didn't mark off on my pattern keeper that I should have. And so I'm thinking I got to do them again and I didn't do them in the right spot. And it's just a whole thing. I can't remember this part up here. Um, it's just kind of background. So I, I love the colors. Okay. So I again, I'm working my way this way. So, so far this month, I'm at 840 stitches. And for total, I'm at 24,631 stitches out of 301,600 stitches. So I am at a whopping 8.17%, okay? Um, I wanted to see if I could get to 10% by the end of the year. I don't think I'm gonna make that, but I'm still gonna give it a go. So this is my first item that's gonna be part of my 12 by 12. And that is, again is Vintage Baker by Heaven and Earth Designs. The next one, and by the way, I'm not doing these in any particular order. Um, I may have more of a system on Saturday, which I'll share at the end, but for the most part, these are in no particular order. So one of the things I want to 
do in 2023, which I'll talk about more next week, is I want to revisit some designers. And one of those designers is Paula Vaughn. I am working on, or I have worked on, some of her stitching in the past. So when I went over to storage, I have a crate that I keep all of my patterns in. I went through my crate. She's got her own folder, her own file folder in the crate. Okay, that's how much... I have of her. I have one of her hardback books and then I have a few of her pamphlets. But she, out of all the designers that I have, she's probably one of the ones I have the most patterns for. Because, you know, back in the 80s, early 90s, she was the, she was the it girl. She was the ultimate, that was the one you did if you liked florals or even country or um, vignettes. Okay, that was who you turned to was Paula Vaughn. Um, and she was very prolific with her artwork anyway. So there was lots of choices. I have had this pattern ooh, at least 20, if not 25 years, okay? And it is one of her later prints because this says it is book 59 out of her patterns. So like I said, she was very prolific with her artwork. But my new start, uh, one of the new starts for this weekend is going to be Delicate Beauties. I've always loved this leaflet. It, like I said, it's one of her later ones, but... I just love florals and I've done her cherished memories, three sisters. Um, and I think I've done one more. I started to have and to hold, um, which was a wedding one. Um, but I just, I love her patterns. I love florals. I love vases of flowers and it was between this one and love songs. And I have that one as well in a book, but this one won out and actually I have two copies of this leaflet. So one of them will definitely be in a future um, giveaway. So that tells you right there how much I love this pattern because I have two of them. Okay. And I rarely duplicate anything like that. So I'm going to do this on a piece of Jobelin, 28 count white Jobelin. I had it for another project years and years and years ago but it was in my stash, so I'm gonna use this. And this came from the, the uh, local needle workshop I used to work at. So I don't have a project bag for her yet. So Delicate Beauties is my second project for 12 by 12. Okay, and I'm excited about that one. Um, the next project is actually my new start for December. It actually was my Christmas day new start and it is also one of the designers i wanted to revisit and that was teresa winsler okay i have um quite a few of her projects um her charts but the majority of them are the carousel horses or the rocking horses so i'm going i'm working on the christmas rocking horse which is chestnut okay and you all, I remember buying this chart. It was on, as you can see, it was on the clearance rack. I remember when I bought it. Um, and I was at Lee Ward's. And I remember the exact location I was at. For some reason, this sticks out to me. I remember where I was and when I bought it. Okay. Um, I had to be in high school, I think. Either high school or college when I bought it. Because I was collecting them. Okay. Because I did this one that's on the back, Trotter, which I have shown you all. I'm in the process of backstitching on Sweetheart. And actually, Misty is the other one that I have that I do want to complete. Since I've got those four, I want to do them all. Um, so this is Chestnut. And here is my start. And actually, like I said, I started it on Christmas. But you can see I've got the saddle. This is the outline of the saddle. And... This is the actual horse right here. So it's going pretty fast. This is a 28 count even weave, ivory even weave from Hobby Lobby that I got a few months ago and I really like it. Um, I love how it's stitching up. You know Teresa is known for those quarter stitches and half stitches and all that type of foolishness, but they aren't bad on this fabric, okay? All of her, my previous Teresa Winslers that I had done, they were on Ada. And if you're doing those half stitches, that is not fun on Ada to me. Okay, some people doesn't bother them. 
but with the amount of back stitching that's going to be on this and all of the half stitches I'm glad I'm working on 28 count because it's so much easier to do those half stitches when you're going over two threads so again this is my new start it's going pretty well I haven't spent a whole lot of time on it um, I've just kind of worked on it in the evenings I did work on it for the longest amount of time on Christmas Day but even on Christmas Day I only did like maybe this part here and I kind of came down here so I got all this last night and I only worked on it for maybe an hour so it's going really fast and I'm kind of surprised pleasantly so I may stick with this one um, it is on my whip go board um, so we will see but I'm enjoying stitching on chestnut and I have not forgotten about you all I I'm storing my flosses for this one in a floss pocket because this one will probably travel with me at some point and I'll explain but I'm still gonna do a tutorial on how to do this floss pocket. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to get it done before I go back to work next week. So this one will hold 20 threads. And I'm actually working on another one for this project in particular because it has a little more than 20 threads, I think. And I wanna make a double-sided one, okay? And I will show you how to do that in the video as well. So that is Chestnut by Teresa Winsler on a 28 count even weave over two, two over two. Um, yes, and I definitely got this more than 20 years ago because this has my maiden name on it. Okay, so I know I got that a long, long, long time ago. Okay, all right, moving on to my next new start. Okay, this is new start number two. And you all, I've been talking about this one forever and I still haven't put a stitch in, but Sweater Weather by October House. And I've actually come across a couple of other October House designs that I really think I'm gonna try and buy. Um, but this is, I believe a 2018 chart. And I'm using the called for flosses I have them all finally and then I'm using a 28 count mushroom Lugana for this I've already cut it and searched it it is ready to go so I have no more excuses it will be started as part of 12 by 12 this weekend okay here are my flosses I put them in little baggies I got to get some more of these bags before Saturday anyway it's on my Joanne shopping list but here are my flosses, all separated and ready to go. And that is new start number two. This next one, and I did not iron this one, so I apologize. This is whip number two. And I have not put any stitches in this since I showed this in my original whip parade when I first started doing floss tube. But this is the flower peddler. By mystic stitch it is a full coverage I've done one other full coverage mystic stitch and this is another one that I started and I want to say I started this probably around 2007 something like that 2006 2007 because I think my daughter maybe had just been born and I had just finished the previous one so it was and I think I finished that one in maybe 05 06 something like that so this is the flower peddler um, just a little fuzzy bike scene. I imagine it to be a European lane somewhere. Um, but I am on page two. This is being done on an 18 count white Ada. But there is my progress. I don't know if you can see the doorway here. So I'm kind of excited about touching this one again it has not been touched since I was originally working on it and I know a lot of people especially people that are new to floss tube have said they are coming back to cross stitch I don't think I've ever really left it but I've my level of involvement has gone up and down 
And that was primarily because my kids were small. Okay. Um, so that's the main reason why. Um, but I never, never really left it, which I'm glad about. All right. New start number three. This is welcome. And I think when I when I uh, talk about it, I call it Welcome Pineapple. But I picked this chart up in Atlanta. My husband and I had gone down to Atlanta very, very, very early in our marriage. I'm not, I'm, I can't even say for sure we were married. But he went on a business trip. And he was like, hey, you want to come with me? And I was like, yeah. So we went down to Atlanta. And while he was in his meetings and such, I went on the rounds to the craft stores and cross stitch shops and quilt shops and things of that nature. And I picked this one up and I had already always envisioned doing it for the foyer in our home. Okay. And that's not part of the design. I spilled something on that. Um, and then I was going to personalize it with our last name here at the bottom, but this is done on a linen and I'm not even gonna lie. That's why I haven't started it yet. I've even got some thread already in a needle, but I have not started it. Okay. Oh, actually I put it in four stitches. I'm not counting that as a start. Okay. But this, I, I don't know what count this is. I'm almost positive it's 28 because at that time I was not working on 32. So this is probably a 28 count linen. Um, I could not tell you the color, but what set this one apart, it uses pearl cotton. I've had the pearl cotton the entire time. This has been kitted up literally since I picked it out because I was determined I was going to do this. So we've already had one house and it never made it on the wall. It's going to make it on the wall in the next one. Okay. So, and it has beads on the pineapple and here are the beads. I got them. I'm ready to roll. I have no excuses, but I love this chart. I just think it's a little intimidating because I don't even know if you can see the outline on there. You got to get close, but look at that. It's so light. And then just the whole linen thing. Y'all know how I feel about linen. I like the look of it, but I do not enjoy stitching on it. I make a lot of mistakes. I feel like and have to do a lot of frogging. So I'm determined though to make this one work. So that's another new start for 12 by 12. Let's go to a whip. This is one you have seen. This is one I have been working on. And I think in the last video, I said, oh, I'm going to set this one to the side too. Mm -mm. I've been putting in work. This is Annie's Market. It's a fall stitch from Just Cross Stitch Magazine, October 2004 issue. I love this so much. I am doing this on 32 count Rogue Lugana in Moonshine that I got from Needlework Galleria. And here is where I am. I'm working my way across on the bottom. I have finished this corner. This corner is complete. And now I'm working my way over. And it's getting easier and easier. I enjoy 32 count. That is not where I started stitching with, um, but I really like it. And as you can see, those pumpkins are starting to come into play. I'm starting on the next part of the house and I'm really, really enjoying it. So this one is on my whipbill board. I'm not putting it away. I'm, I'm enjoying working on it too much. Even though it's no longer fall, I don't care. I'm still working on Annie's Market from Just Cross Stitch Magazine and I love it. So that is another whip. Um, this whip, this is going to take me two seconds to show you because I have made absolutely no progress since the last time we talked about it. This is Gingerbread Cookies by Stitching with the Housewives. Called Four Colors. It is being stitched on 20 count Lugana that I got from Needlework Gallery as well. I haven't progressed past the G. I'm still debating if I'm going to switch to pearl cotton, B5200 pearl cotton for the white. I'm gonna compare these two once I get another letter done and see which one I like better. And I am again stitching with the called for classic color works. 
So that is gingerbread cookies. That's another whip. And, ooh, I'm so excited about this one, you all. This, I'm so ready to get back out. This is Spirit Dancer by Butternut Road. Uh, I'm gonna give her her shout out now. Nikki Stitchy is a new floss tutor. And she talked about having done this one in her one of her videos recently. I think she's only got two up. But if you guys have not checked her out, go check her out. Beautiful work. Her, she has a lot of full coverage, a lot of full co coverage, a lot of mirabilia, okay? A lot of Marilyn Livid emblem. Oh my goodness, just magnificent, detailed work. Um, so much that I like and admire. So if you have not checked her out, um, head over to her channel. Her name is Nikki Stitchy, but she talked about having done this one. So this is a whip for me, probably a good 15, 20 year whip. As a matter of fact, I know it's a 20 year whip because I remember again where I was when I bought it, Jean's Corner here in St. Louis. She has not been in business for many years. It was a, a sample on the wall, both this one and the companion piece. The companion piece, I had that one too, Earth Dancer. But how Spirit Dancer turns out is going to determine if I'm going to finish or even attempt to start Earth Dancer. I have all of the beads that go with it. And I have all of the specialty threads that go with it. Um, Ultra Suede, a bunch of other stuff. So let me show you where she is. I showed this in my original whip parade. I haven't touched her. So I'm excited, even if it's just for an hour, I'm excited to finally touch her again. So there is Spirit Dancer, okay? And I was down here on the dress. I was up here in the background and I was starting on the bird. So I got lots of choices. I think over here, there's a bunch of stuff that still needs to be filled in. And then, of course, this is her neck getting right up here, here. So, really, you all, this was the bulk of the project, this huge dress. And I've still got some more to go. But she's a good, I don't know. Let me look at the pattern again. I would say... maybe almost halfway okay the bottom is definitely almost done and actually now that i'm looking at it this over here there's nothing else that goes here this part all this down here is complete so really i've just got to finish her arm the bird here in her hand there's a there this oval background continues all the way up and then Actually, no, this is not her neck. This is the middle of her body. Her hand is here. And so I've got basically her whole head area goes in there. And then, of course, there's a chair that she's sitting on. And the back of the chair goes here. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty deep into it. So I need to make this a goal for 2023 to finish. I would love to hang her up. So I got, I got, I'm deep. So I might as well just go on and take the final dive. So that is Spirit Dancer by Butternut Road. And I've seen on Stash Unload, I've seen both of those patterns um, numerous times. So if you're looking for it, you can definitely get it on Stash Unload and I don't I don't know if it's still available, readily available otherwise, but I know you can get it on there. Spirit Dancer was actually my last whip. So now I just have three new stars to show you. So the first one is Bengal Tiger. I don't know what this came from. I don't know if it was a standalone project chart or if it came out of a magazine. I'm going to guess it came out of a magazine, 
but somebody sent this to me years ago. It, you know, back before the internet was real big, you had the online kind of like boards and chat rooms. And I guess I must have requested if anybody had any tiger charts and somebody sent me this one. Um, I'm going to insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like when it's done because I was able to find a picture of it in color online. Um, so here it is, and I'm doing this on a 28 count wheat Lugana from one, two, three stitch. Um, so I'm excited about this. This one has been a long time coming. I know I've had this chart for 20 plus years. So I'm excited about finally giving that one a go. Um, the next one is another one I'm excited about. Little House Needleworks hometown holiday one of the categories i have on my whipco board is a series stitching a series and i love little houses and buildings and things um you will see in 2023 i have a lot of them planned um if you saw my last video i bought a lot <laughs> last video so i'm going to be stitching a lot of houses and buildings this year but this series these are the four that i have i have the needle workshop my house, the bookstore, and the quilt shop. I believe I'm going to get started on the needle workshop. Again, I'm going to do these individually. I have decided I'm going to mount them on blocks and wrap them with the decorative fabric on the back side. But I'm super excited about doing these. Um, I actually am going to use fabric out of my stash. I think I, if you all remember our last video, I was talking about how these two were so close. Okay. Um, this one is 32 count taupe from one, two, three stitch. And this one is 32 count platinum. Both of them are Luganas. And I got this for on Etsy. Okay. And I'll post a picture of her shop or the name of her shop down below. But I think I'm going to start off with the platinum because it's a little lighter. And here are the called for colors. Um, I do not use all of these in all of the designs, but I thought they all look good on these fabrics. So I like the platinum a little better and I'm tempted. I may just order some more of this from her but I really like these colors together so I'm gonna stitch them I'm gonna fit as many as I can on this single piece and then move to another piece and just keep them all together that way they're not getting all frayed they're not doing all this and then once I'm ready to start fully finishing them I'll cut them apart and fully finish them that way so that again is little house Meter Works Hometown Holiday Series. I only have four, but I have plans to purchase the rest of them as the year goes on. I think there were 19 or 20 in the series, and I know there are about 15 that I really like and want to do. So that is new start number five. Now for my last one, my last new start. And I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I might need your input before Friday, before Saturday. This is the one I originally thought I wanted to do. This is The Bakery by Country Cottage Needleworks. I purchased this a couple years ago. Um, but I did not have any fabric. I have all of the called fours pulled and they've been pulled for some time. I am going to sub out. Uh, I did not purchase the Bella Rosa, which is a called for. And I believe I'm going to sub for that the Pink Posy. I wanted something a little little pinker but I have picked out as the fabric this is 32 count petal Lugana but I believe it is a picture this plus from one two three stitch and the holes are tiny and you guys still aren't getting the full effect of the modeling this has some touches of green and pink in the fabric so it's very pretty and it's very subtle. But a part of me is not sure I want to start it yet. So my other choice 
is Sugar Cookies by Cricut Collection. I love this one. So I don't know, at the last minute, this one might give the bakery the boot. And this fabric I got from Needlework Galleria. I cannot read the lady's handwriting on here, but this is another modeled. And it was between this one and a more solid blue, but, and actually that's reading pretty good. So this is what I'm planning on doing sugar cookies on. It's a 28 count Lugana. And it's so, so pretty. That's reading pretty good, but it's even, it's even nicer in person. I mean, I don't know if you can see there's some even some touches of green in there. And so I'm thinking about putting sugar cookies on that. And I had a couple of other changes I wanted to make um, besides just the fabric color. I don't know if you all can see this for those of you that don't have this chart, but the word sugar is spelled out right there. I can't see that. To me, to me, the, the word sugar gets completely lost. I was showing this to my husband and I was asking his opinion on the two different fabrics I was thinking about. And he picked the one that I showed you. And he said, oh, cookies. And I said, well, actually it's sugar cookies. And I showed him, I pointed out the letters. He said, oh, I didn't even see the sugar. And I agree, you cannot see it. It's really hard to see. And I remember when I first saw the design, I didn't. I thought it was just called cookies. So when I was doing a search for it, I just did a search for cookies. But it's actually sugar cookies. So I think I'm gonna change the word sugar to one of these reds so it'll pop a little more. Um, either the reds or I may even do the blues. But I'm gonna change it to something because you cannot see it. It looks like it's in like a gold color now. And that's the same gold that a lot of these are outlined in. But to me, you can't really see it. So that's one change I'm definitely gonna make. And there's lots of reds in this to choose from. So I'm definitely going to change that. And I think that'll pop very nicely on that blue. So help a sister out y'all. If you all have a definite opinion, sugar cookies or the bakery, let me know. But I'm trying to decide. Before I let you go, just wanted to tell you a little bit about my plans on how I'm gonna tackle 12 by 12. Um, since my husband mentioned that we might be going to dinner, I'm going to maybe start early. So instead of starting at noon, maybe start like 10. That way if we're gone for a couple of hours, then I can still touch some of these projects. Um, if I have to leave one out, I'll pick my least favorite or the one that may be more challenging to set up, um, maybe leave that one out, so I'm not sure. But that's my plan as far as time goes. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure they all have a needle. And as much as possible, make sure they all have some type of hoop already with them, okay? Um, for some of them, I'm going to decide where I want to start stitching. For instance, on the spirit dancer, I could go down and finish her dress. I could move up to her hand where the bird is and work on that part. I only We're only gonna have an hour for each one. So I'm gonna make sure if it's one that's a whip that I know exactly what area I want to start in. And if I'm really on the ball, I'll pull a thread and put it in the needle and have it already in there ready to go, okay? Um, but we'll definitely see about that. I'm gonna take a picture, a starting point picture for all of them. Um, I'll probably do that Friday to make sure I have a good picture of where I started because that's also gonna be kind of what I refer back to at the end of the year as I progress through the year. Um, and then the last thing is I'm not going to kit each one of them up. Okay, my vintage baker's already kitted up. My chestnut is already kitted up. Um, a couple of others are already kitted up with DNC. Annie's Market. I have the threads already pulled from my DNC. But the rest of them, the majority of them, if they don't have specialty threads, they're of course DMC. So I'm not gonna kit those up. I'm gonna simply pull from my master set. I have all of the DMC. 
So I will keep my container, like for instance, this is my Annie's Market DMC pieces. I'm gonna keep this nearby, even though I'm gonna be done with that one. I'm gonna keep it nearby. So if there's a thread that I need from that box for another project, I can just pull it directly from there. But the majority of all, none of the new starts, if they are DMC, have been kitted up. So I'm just gonna pull from my DMC stash as I need them and just have this sitting there on the couch next to me. And then I can pull and then put right back into the box. So that's one advantage of having a master set. Um, I have never been one of those people that every time I start or want to kit up a project, I go buy it. I can't do that. That, that I can't do that. I like having a master set and then just working from the master set. Now I do have a small decorative box that I have that has all of my extras that aren't bobbinated in there, but I'm a bobbinator. I want it on a bobbin and I want to finish the bobbin before I start a new one or, or wind a new one. So that's kind of how I roll. Um, so I'm just going to pull directly from my DMC box. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's my plan as far as how I'm going to tackle the um, 12 by 12. So what are my plans for the coming week? Um, on Sunday, which is New Year's Day, I am not going to have a New Year's Day start. I will have started six things the day before. <laughs> I don't need a new one. Um, some people, I think Pam from... No, Steph from Just Keep Stitching. She was saying that she was going to do all whips the first 11 hours. And then kind of as a reward for making it to the end, that 12th item is going to be a new start. Which that That's a great idea. Um, so but I'm just going to have my usual rotation on Sunday, which would be Vintage Baker. That's what I'm going to work on. Um, and like I said, I will share in my next video my plans, my detailed plans, and my completed whip whip go, whip go board. I have my whip go board. I know what the first two calls are. I have them highlighted. But I wanted to wait until after 12 by 12 to finish my whip go board because a I have some wheels that I'm going to spin throughout the year. Well, some of those wheels are going to change because some of the stuff on the new start wheel is going to move to the whip go wheel whip wheel. So I, there's going to be some changes and I have, I'm going to have six new starts. So I'm going to wait until after New Year's Eve to finish my whip go board. And I will promise I will share it in my next video. Um, I am going to just continue to kit up future projects. And when I say kit up, you all, I mean get specialty threads or get fabric. I have master DMC. I don't kit up unless it's something like I'm low on a color. Um, that's one thing I am going to look over for the next couple of days is make sure I'm not low on a color that's going to get used repeatedly um, in some of these projects because I, I do like to have a backup of certain colors like 842, okay, 434, 433, 3371. Um, all of those, I like to have a ram in the bush. I got to have a backup of, you know, colors like that. 3033, okay? Stuff that gets used quite often. I've, lately, 902 has come up in so many projects. Um, so those are the colors I'm going to check and make sure I've got a, at least a backup of them. And then uh, I think I got like a 20% off coupon for Michaels or something that I can use for that. So I'm going to run there and grab those. Like I was working on Chestnut and it needed 520 and only had one skein of 520. And when I found it, the bobbin, it's almost empty. So I know I need to pick up a 520. So that kind of stuff. Um, just make sure my stash looks good, that it's well prepared. Um, in my next video, again, I'm gonna share my plans, but I also wanna share um, the channels of some YouTubers that have really um, inspired me that I've watched regularly. Um, or maybe just discovered this year. Um, I mentioned Nikki Stitchy earlier. The other person I wanted to give a shout out to was Adventures of Stitching. Um, I follow her on both FlossTube and Instagram, Sweet Spirit. 
um, lots of different types of projects. She does some full coverage. She does some, uh, I think she's got some patriotic. She just does a lot of different things and I just enjoy her spirit um, and really enjoy watching her. But, um, and I just wanted to give her a shout out today. But next week I'm gonna mention other floss tubers that I really enjoy who add to my creativity and inspire me not just with their stitching but with how they do their videos as well so I will share that as well um I think that's it let me check my notes I am a teacher after all so you know I have notes um and I'm glad because I think I'm starting to get a glare on my glasses but um yeah I think that's it for today um so next video i will show all those things and i will have some quilt updates and i will also share some project bags that i made that i um gave as gifts my mom co-worker and also i had not forgotten about etsy um my Project bags will be going live on New Year's Day. With everything going on, the catering, people being ill, I just put uh, that on hold. But this Sunday, January 1st, I will have project bags available for purchase. Um, I didn't show them today because I'm going to just put them up on Instagram real quick so you can see. And if you're interested, head on over there. Um, there will be quite a few Christmas ones since that's what I was in the middle of making a lot of um i'm going to try to have at least 10 available and depending on what happens with that i'll try to do it once a month just have some project bags available for purchase once a month on my etsy shop and i will put a link to my etsy shop below because my etsy shop name is layla p creations which is my business name so if you're interested in that we'd love to have you check those out um but that's it this is my last video of 2022. I didn't make it to double digits, but I'm okay. I've got plans uh, to do some additional things in 2023. So thank you all for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, do all those great things. Um, I'm enjoying getting to know many of you. Um, I'm starting to recognize your names as they come up in the comments. Um, so please keep commenting. I do read them all. Um, I enjoy hearing from you and just thank you for your encouragement and your feedback this year. Um, please keep it coming in 2023. I wish nothing but good things for all of you. Um, happy stitching, keep stitching, broaden your horizons and have a great 2023. I will see you hopefully next week and as always, be blessed.